What is going on guys and welcome to a new video and this is going to be the first video um, that I do in kind of a slightly different theme than normal so obviously I've been part of the kind of high level PBM community for quite a long time having played the game so much and I think a bit of a disconnect between kind of how most of the community play the game what gear they have access to and, and how they and what they want guides mostly to be focused on so I'm hoping that I can try and change the guides that I make to not include, you know, mostly best in slot gear, try and downgrade everything and still get successful kills and, and pass that kind of information on uh, to you guys. So first things first, who's this guide for? This is for people that have some experience with normal mode current pack, know what the mechanics are. So they understand what the smoke attack is, they understand what the um, jump attack is and what the lightning wall is and they're looking to transition from normal to hard mode predominantly um you know successfully killing phase four of the fight which is you know the most difficult part if that sounds like you then this guide is definitely for you now i'm going to be using melee in this showcase um i would like to do other styles in the future but for now i'm going to use melee i think melee is quite nice um, as a style to use um, and also is cheaper than other styles to to get into uh, especially um with the cost of like range at the moment and also you know the cost of supplies of like range and the rune supply the rune cost for magic i think melee is is quite nice as, as an entry level style to use now because this is a high tier boss i have some expectations around the gear that people have and i've tried to keep it as budget as possible but not so budget that it's unrealistic um, now i hopefully i've hit the kind of benchmark right here and it'd be great for some feedback in the comments whether you think i've kind of gone too expensive but the, the, the loadout that I'm using costs around 250 mil and the supplies per kill is between the 4 and 500k mark um, so I'll go over kind of my inventory and gear now I'm not going to go over in like every single item but what I am going to do is put a spreadsheet in the description with the t with all the items in the loadout what they do and what they are so um, if you are interested in absolutely everything then you can go down to the description look in that spreadsheet and find out exactly what every single item is so going into the kind of gear that i'm using we're using obviously tier 90 drygores we've got tier 70 power armor and across it all we've got budget perks so we've got precise six on the main hand equilibrium four on the off hand and then we've got biting two devoted four uh, impatient four and then crackling four relentless three the reason i've got biting two was just i had biting two in the bank as opposed to a biting three so I, I i used that now the most expensive part of this loadout is actually the cinder pains and the amulet of souls so almost the, the accessories that adds up to 150 mil of this this preset you can probably get away with not having the cinder pains obviously your dps will be a little bit less by a little bit i mean like six or seven percent less but your the amulet of souls i'd say is quite crucial because it reduces the damage you take on p4 and also inc increases the amount you heal from soul split now in terms of unlocks um i obviously have the tier 99 prayer i'm not going to be using that i'll be using the tier 95 prayer i have limitless but i will not be using the limitless i won't be using zaris godsword spec i won't be using um trim masterwork spear so all of that is not allowed um, and I've also downgraded like my potion, so I've got an adrenaline potion as opposed to adrenaline renewal. Now I have got an El elder overload. Um, the reason for that was that I didn't have a supreme, but I think the difference is um, not too significant between the two. I could be wrong in that, um, but I think a lot of people nowadays have access to higher tier her herb lore, and you know with the boosts that are available, you can get this uh, uh, obviously a lower level as well. So hopefully this is a realistic loadout. Um, and the only thing, the other things to touch on are the divine. If you don't have 117 farming, put turtling four instead of absorptive on this. The reason I've got absorptive is that I just had 117 farming and uh, the molecular spurk, so I didn't change it over. But this will not make too much difference to the kill at all. Um, so yeah, just change that to turtling four. You're gonna want a vamp scrim for phase four. You can camp it the whole kill. Um, I just use it for phase four now that I'm a little bit more experienced and don't need too much healing throughout the fight because I soul split flick. If you don't want a soul split flick, then use Vamp for the whole kill. Um, and I've just gone for a Bandos book, which is basically like the cheapest god book there is. Anything you can do to upgrade this setup will obviously increase your spill, your kill time, and make things easier. Um, so, yeah, in terms of relics that I've got active, I've got Heightened Senses, Fury of the Small, and Death Ward. Um, 
those are the relics that I tend to run with for PVM. Now, if you don't have access to some of those, it's not a huge deal, like heightened senses, for example. It's not a massive deal. If you don't have that, you could use Berserk's Fury. If you don't really run many PVM relics, um, I'd recommend A, you get some, but it's not crucial. I think the most crucial one is probably Fury of the Small because extra adrenaline throughout the fight is uh, always useful. And if you can, I would, I would recommend running with um, heightened senses, Fury of the Small, and... Um, death ward but yeah as i said if you don't have access to any of those it's not essential for this fight now the final thing that i want to kind of say is that you definitely want to get a slayer task for this of node and dragon kin so care about counts as a node and dragon kin task which means that you'll get the accuracy and the damage boosts from the slayer helmet you want to change your preset slightly to have a slayer helmet instead of a bandos helmet if you don't have the anachronia um, stand but other than that it doesn't make uh, there's not any changes that you need to the loadout and we are going to be using the Zerk Aura I tested out a few other auras to see whether it was viable with those and also to see if it, you took less damage on the final phase and to be honest the best option is definitely Zerk Aura because accuracy is crucial on that final phase to get the Echoes of Carapac killed quickly so without that extra accuracy of the Zerk Aura even with just an accuracy aura you splash way too much even with tier 90s so definitely go for the Zerk Aura um, and hopefully you've got that unlocked from War's Retreat for the 25k Marks of War. So that's going to be it for the intro. As I said, if you want more details about the preset and the loadout, check the description. If you think this is unrealistic in terms of value of a preset for kind of more entry level, then let me know in the comments um, and I'll try and adjust future guides so that it's even more budget. Um, and yeah, we'll jump into a live showcase of the kill now. And it's going to be a kind of live commentary of a kill um, and we'll go through how to handle each of the different elements okay so i'm going to attempt to kind of commentate over what's going on in the clip i will pause at certain points so that i've got enough time to kind of discuss everything so first off we're going to start wars retreat we're going to drink a sip of um, the poison plus 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 potion at the bank because that'll last for 12 minutes which is long enough for the kill and we don't need to put it in our invent then we're going to go to an adrenaline crystal and then we're going to build up to full adrenaline and we're going to dragon battle axe spec which i didn't actually do for this kill so do that in your kill so when you go in i would have sound turned on we're going to do a surge and then one basic to stall with the shield pot up and then you'll hear carapax say um when he when he starts his voiceover uh, always it's always you world guardian that's when you want to three of ulm when he says you, I, I always throw it when he says the word you, throw my Vuln bomb, and then uh, Zerk, and then target cycle, I mess up the target cycle in this kill. So you can actually just click on him, um, and then we go into a Zerk rotation. So a couple of basics, a Dren pot, and then into uh, Assault. Now I'm not gonna go into Destroy, I'm gonna wait for the first special attack here. I'll tear right through you when he lifts his staff in the air. Now. It can be easy to panic and think that you need to stand under the boss straight away. You do have a little bit of time. It's basically when the staff touches the ground, you need to be underneath the carry pack. So you can see what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click underneath and then I'm going to go into a channeled ability, um, which will stop me from moving whilst continuing to damage the carry pack. So you can see here, I go into my destroy underneath the carry pack. And this is a really good time to soul split. You're not going to take any damage from anything. Um, so yeah, you can soul split a lot of health back. Um, and then he's going to do three more attacks and then he's going to do his jump attacks so again when he's doing the jump attacks this is another good time to soul split so we're going to do bleeds dismember we're going to do slaughter blood tendrils um, and then we're going to surge away and then the rotation here is to surge barge surge barge surge barge basically um, and that's going to be kind of the hardest bit for phase one so from from here we're not going to zerk again it's going to be off cooldown but if we use it now we'll finish this phase so quickly enough that when we get to the time warp we don't have zerk off cooldown so essentially here it's just threshold camping till we can get the boss down to 50k life points which is going to phase next so obviously we've got the lightning wall this is fairly easy to deal with because it's only one and the best way to deal with it is just to blade it dive through after that first lightning it's a good time to re-vuln bomb that's roughly when your first full bomb is going to run out and again we're just going to be going into thresholds you don't really need to worry too much about the order of thresholds that you're using just make sure you're always using assault destroy uh, tendrils and bleeds he will do another staff raise attack so obviously you want to dd under him be ready for that attack and then just finish it off down to the 50k threshold 
So in this threshold, you can actually soul split because the damage you do won't hit him, but it will heal you for the amount that it should do. Once we've done that, now we don't want to use any of our assault or destroy thresholds here. We just want to use basics and also any bleeds that we can and make sure that we are 100% adrenaline after three hits. After those three hits, he's going to do the I'll tear right through you attack. And again, we're going to DD under him. Now, what I do here is I anticipate, and this stops me from doing um, the time warp and the zerk on the same tick, because if you do that, um, then you'll come out of the time warp with zero adrenaline. So we're going to anticipate and stand underneath him, and then we're going to click the time warp button, and then we're going to zerk. Um, now, depending, this is a little bit dependent on like impatient procs and whether you've got the heightened senses um, ability. Uh, not ability, a uh, relic, but if you have got the heightened senses relic, you can get up to basically another, you can get up to assault before the time warp runs out, which is just an extra little bit of DPS you can do with it. You'll get to assault just before the time warp runs out, use it, and then you'll get moved, but it doesn't cancel the assault, so keep assaulting, and then you can assault and destroy again, basically. So you see here, stand under, anticipate, time warp, zerk, um, didn't have an adrenaline pot ready, or left, so we're just going to a rotation and because I got some impatient procs, um, you can see that I'm going to be able to go into an assault here. It's not essential. You'll still be able to do this similar rotation um, and you'll phase it at a slightly later point in the kill, but it doesn't matter because we're never going to phase it during the lightning phase, which is the only time when you shouldn't phase um, into phase four. So it doesn't really matter for, for this part of the kill. Uh, but yeah, you'll see I'll go into an assault. I'm going to get time warped back. I'm going to leave it because my assault is still hitting. And then I'm going to go into another assault and then into destroy. Now, if you've got a two-handed weapon, it's actually better to go assault hurricane here because um, you're not going to get all four destroy hits in after you've done this second assault before Karapak slams the ground. Now, he takes half damage when he slams the ground, so it's not worth kind of staying. So um, you'd be better off going into a hurricane if you can. If you have a two-handed weapon, then you're comfortable with those switches. If not, just get ready to surge away and cancel the channel to penalty when um, he's about to slam. So you'll see here, I'd get two hits in of the uh, destroy, surge away, and then barge, ability, and then surge away again, barge, ability, surge away, barge. And then now at this point, what we're gonna do is he's about to do the lightning attacks. So what we're gonna do here is just dump some thresholds, do as much damage as we can. After three hits, he's gonna do the lightning attacks. And so what we're gonna do here is we need to look where the lightning is coming from and run towards that direction. We're gonna put on our shield and reflect for safety and then you can just surge into like this X gap. Uh, you see it creates sort of an X. Now, th this doesn't always happen. It can also come where the lines are basically um, perpendicular to each other and they come across the room. In that scenario, you just have to blade dive through one, turn around and surge through the other. So um, once we've done that, we're going to build to full adrenaline and then we're going to use Time Warp Zerk again. So you can see here's around 160k life points. This is a fine HP to do that. If it's lower than this, let's say he's got like 90k HP left, you're going to want to do what we did on phase one, which is to um, kind of threshold camp. Otherwise, your Time Warp ability isn't going to be off cooldown for the op most optimal time to do it for the start of phase three. So yeah, around 160k, like 150, 140 is probably all right. If you're kind of sub 100k, then you probably want to just threshold camp at this point. So yeah, time warp, zerk. And at this point, you can actually use an adrenaline pot. Um, I don't, I think I use it maybe at the start of the next phase. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, so we're going to go into the usual time warp rotation where if we get to assault before we get brought back, we'll um, go into it. Now, what can happen is when the lightning is coming... If you spend too long dodging it and not going into your time warp, if you do the time warp late, you've got to be a little bit careful because if you time warp and then he does this staff raise attack and then you DD under him, the time warp can actually bring you out at an inappropriate time, uh, which means that you'll get one of his smoke special attacks. So you just got to be a little bit wary. If you clear the lightning pretty fast, then you should be absolutely fine for the time warp ability not bringing you out of the DD, but that's just something to be kind of a little bit careful of. Um, so yeah, you see here we get a DD um, and just finish off the rest of this phase. And again, we'll just do a few basics to heal back um, whilst he's doing the special. Um, you can Vuln Bomb at this point as well. And then it's uh, the same as the start of the kind of other phases. Bleeds only, don't use Assault, don't use Destroy. Make sure you're at 100% or 110% Adrenaline by the time you get to 
uh, by the time three attacks have been done and you're going to be DDing under him. So you can actually be slightly lower than 100% because obviously you're going to do an anticipate. So that anticipate is going to give you some extra adrenaline as well. So let's say you're 92% when you're about to DD, that's fine because you can then uh, anticipate and then go into your time warp berserk rotation. So you can see here, just bleeds. You can actually try and get a res here, which is what uh, you can see I get if you're kind of lower HP. This was just as a use case example uh, for if you need to get some HP, but generally, you know, if you're soul split thicking, you'll have no worries with food, uh, or if you've got a vamp scrim on as well, you shouldn't have too many worries with food for these phases. So, but yeah, that's a nice, but in those three hits before you're about to zerk, that can be quite a nice time to get a cheeky little res in as well. So, staff raise under anticipate time warp zerk and then we're gonna do um you know exactly the same as we've done on the previous skills i think you can see here that i um i just about get the assault off oh no i don't get the assault off before the time warp but it doesn't affect anything too much just as an example here um and then yeah we're gonna go to a destroy we only get a couple of hits off before we have to surge and then barge surge barge surge barge um and it's yeah, it's just very it's very similar to the to the previous phases that we've already done. Um, you see there that I messed it up. I knew I'd got the timing wrong, so I put my uh, melee prayer on, and um, yeah, just ran away basically. Now, at this point in the fight, you can see he's got about two hundred and thirty k HP left. So it can be a little tricky here because we've got we don't want to put Zerk on cooldown so that we don't have it for the start of phase four. Um, so we're actually going to do a different rotation with Time Warp to um, kind of deal damage. Now this is this is a relatively safe one that I found that does okay damage. Um, so you'll see does the power of the staff. We want to make sure that we're full fullish HP here. So we're going to res, and then also ideally you want to be full prayer. Um, you can see I'm only about 600 there, but ideally what I would have done is taken a sip of prayer pot as well. Now what I do is is Time Warp um, at full HP and full prayer. And then you're going to reflect and then you're going to debilitate and you'll see here that we're actually stacking quite a lot of hits um, onto the boss uh, as damage um, and then we get time warped back and we're full hp and full prayer again so i'll just i just want to go over that little section again just so that it's it's clear um, so basically we're going to run to the middle of the room because there's going to be lightning coming from all directions take a res if you want to and also drink prayer prop you're going to time warp and then, so I, I, I don't do this optimally because I'm too close to the lightning on the time warp, which means that I don't, I think I take a hit before the reflect, but basically, yeah. So we're gonna go into reflect and then debilitate the boss. And you can see that the damage is, you know, it's reasonable damage that you're doing, you know, you might get like 20K damage off on the boss and then you're back to full HP when the time warp runs out uh, and you've completely dealt with that. Uh, without having to be too risky with you know surging around the room surging through lightning and you you know you don't use any supplies doing it which is which is quite nice so we're obviously getting to the kind of harder part of the fight now which is going to be phase four at this point we don't want to use zerk we just want to use our thresholds to get him down again watch out for the staff raise after the lightning special make sure you dd under him when that comes up just dump all of your thresholds at this point so we need to get him down to 50k before he does another lightning wall um, and this can be like the tricky a, a little bit of a tricky bit if you don't get him down to 50k before the next lightning wall you're going to have to deal with another one so ideally you want to get to a point where you're never going to have to deal with that so you see here 69k we should be no worries we've got the three jumps and the three attacks after that before the lightning to finish this off now this is where we want to start thinking about prepping for phase four before we actually phase in so we're going to put our vamp scrim on and turn it on and we're also going to re-overload because about this time is when your overload is going to start to run out so and then i'm also going to run over to um the southern part of the room and that's because that's the first the first clone we're going to jump into is the south and then we're going to jump into the north clone uh once we've hit our vitality pot so you can see my supply level is pretty good um and this isn't even using a vamp scrim so if you're using a vamp scrim you should be able to pretty much no food this i've used one sip of brew one uh, bites of blue rubber so definitely possible to get to this phase with like a full invent of food which is why you don't really need to bring a yak um, why a ripper is a better option so um, yeah we're, we're just getting ready uh, we're going to re-overload we're going to put our grim on and we're going to jump into this south clone now you're automatically going to start running towards the southern uh, mirror image and you need to basically spam click away from that as you can see that I'm doing here and at, as we're spam clicking away 
um, we're also going to hit our vitality pot. So that's going to double our HP. And then we're going to jump into the Northern Clone. Now, what that basically does is means that Southern Clone is going to last a lot longer, um, which means we have less uh, kind of echoes attacking us. Now, our HP is going to go down significantly when we jump in, as you can see here, my HP, because uh, the clones have different HP. So you're going to go to about half health, so about 9,000 health. And then when that runs out, you're going to be about 4,500 health. So once you've done that jump, you're going to start running towards the Northern Echo. And what you want to do is click just before the Northern Echo um, so that you stop before you attack him. You'll see I'm clicking there, and I'm going to stop just before I get to him. Once I've reached that location, I'm going to Time Warp Zerk. So Time Warp, Zerk, and then I'm going to Adren Pot, Basic, and then into an Assault. And at this point, so you will be attacked by an Echo and Kerapak himself. And you can survive this and you want to try your best um, to, to not eat too much food in this scenario. Uh, particularly, you don't want to be eating the brews because that's going to brew down your stats, which means your accuracy is less on these, which means you don't kill them as quickly. So, you know, once you've got that assault off, you've the adrenaline that you've got here... Uh, it doesn't matter too much because you're going to go back to 100% when the time war kicks in, which means that you can eat a sailfish and you can eat, uh, you know, a blue bubba, which is going to heal you a couple thousand. And then um, once you've done that, you know, you're going to get time warped. So you see here, I'm actually waiting for the time warp before I eat because um, I've still got 2.7k HP. I'm going to go back up to about 5k. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking about that. But if I got too low, then I would eat. So I can see here time warp and then I, that's when I choose to eat and I eat solid food because I've got plenty of adren to dump the next three, two thresholds which is going to be the assault and the destroy and I'm also going to use my enhanced Excalibur spec as well so it's all about maximizing accuracy at this point maximizing your health and, and making sure you can get those thresholds off without um, yeah without doing um, you know making your stats any worse so I did get lucky with the enhanced devoted proc there that doesn't always happen but even when it doesn't happen, you can get through this part fine um, in terms of the damage that you're receiving because Karapak isn't enraged yet. So the Echo and the main Karapak aren't hitting you as hard as they will later on. So we're going to finish this off and then we're going to go over to the second one. Um, so at this point, basically we what we've got is um, most of our thresholds on cooldown. We don't have Zerk, uh, but we do have our Bleeds and we also have Flurry. So... I, what I tend to do is go into a flurry. Hopefully your clone is still alive or just about to die at this point, which means what you can do is you can flurry and then you can get cheeky res. So that's going to put you up to basically pretty high HP because that res can heal up to like 4k, um, which is which is really nice. And also you've probably only got Kerapak on you as opposed to Kerapak and the Echo and this, uh, this Echo on you. So res, and then I just chuck a couple of bleeds on. Now... And basically eat up at this point. Try not to use solid food because we need to get to 100% adrenaline because our time warp ability is about to come off cooldown. Now, this at this point, you can take quite a lot of damage. So what you can do is put your divine on. And that will help, but just make sure you don't get smited. So keep an eye on your prayer. You'll see that, uh, you know, I'm 100% adrenaline. I've got my divine on to try and tank some of that damage. And I'm going to go time warp. And I'm going to Cade. So at this point, it's just basics to try and bring him down. Drink your prayer, summoning renewal pots as well, so that your Ripper can do extra damage. That's something that I don't actually do. At this point, your third clone is going to be dead, so you're going to have two Echoes plus Kerapak on you. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go into my second Cade. So when your first, when the time warp ends, you should still have some time on your first Cade if you've got Turtling four. Um, so do your second Cade warp, like do an ability, and then do your second Cade because that gives you, you know, an extra abilities. Um, of Cade, go into your second Cade and finish this off. Now, normally you would finish this Echo before your Cade runs out, but I was a little slow in this instance. Um, so basically what you need to make sure is that you're at 50% Adrenaline by the time this runs out. So I'm just at it here, and then I'll go into a Reflect, Bladed Dive Over, and start attacking the final Echo. So you've got to be really careful here. You should be okay if you've got Reflect up, um, but you're going to start taking a lot of damage. And if you've got a divine on, that's going to eat your prayer real quick. So when you're eating, you know, the way that I normally eat is obviously um, jellyfish brew. In this scenario here, I would sacrifice a little bit of adrenaline and do uh, sailfish and then prayer potion. 
because the prayer goes down real quick here. So yeah, we're basically building to 100 and we wanna be at 100 so that we can use the next time warp. I chuck in a, a little res there as well. Um, you know, you, you are gonna get these enhanced devoted procs. Like you can get zero at this point, but the amount of times you're getting attacked, they do proc relatively frequently. So it's, I don't think it's unrealistic to show a kill like this where you get some en enhanced devoted procs at these kind of timings. Um, so we're at 100%, we're gonna time warp and we're gonna devotion. And then we're gonna attack the echo and we're gonna Zerk. Now you gotta be a little bit careful here. You can see I've got three seconds left on my time warp ability. So I could get two abilities in, in, that, in that time, but if I do that, I'm going to be on global two cooldown when the time warp resets, which means that I can't instantly do a devotion. So in this scenario here, you'll see what I do is one ability, and then I could have done another one, but I didn't want to, because I knew my devotion would go off cooldown and I wouldn't be able to use it instantly as a time warp end, which means that the attack from Karapak would hit me on a Zerk, which is not good. So you see here, I'm spamming my, um, my devotion ability, and then I am straight back to attacking the Echo, and we're gonna go into you know a threshold here, so you can see we go into destroy. And what you'll find here is that you should be able to get this dead, or you should be able to kill this Echo of Karapak before your devotion runs out. And the good thing about that is you get a reset, so you can see I've gone back up to six seconds there. So I'm gonna barge over, I'm gonna drop a Vulnbon, go into an Assault, and then this is where your Devotion is kind of gonna run out and you're gonna to start to take serious damage. So I, I tank that hit because I'm pretty high health, uh, and also um, I wanted to get as much damage in on that Assault as I could. And once I've done that, I'm gonna to start to be a little bit more defensive. So the rotation that I use here is Debilitate. Now, as long as everything has gone well, you should have some food left to be able to tank a little bit here, but we don't want to be tanking without any defensive whatsoever. That's that's going to get you killed very quickly. So um, you can see I've gone into debilitate, and I'm just doing like a couple of basic abilities to to kind of build a dren. And essentially, what we're going to do at this point is another rotation with time warp. It's about to come off cooldown, and that rotation is going to involve resonance. It's going to involve reflect. So, you know, you can see I'm taking quite a bit of damage, but fortunately our time warp is off cooldown. So I'm gonna time warp, and then I'm gonna res, and then I'm gonna reflect. And then I'm gonna go into uh, kind of just basic abilities. If you have assault, use assault here. When the time warp comes off, you're still gonna have um, basically like a couple of ticks of, of um, reflect left. So you don't wanna resonance right away. You wanna do one ability and then you want to reflect uh, resonance, which will get you a full heal, and then back into reflect again, and then basics until um, your reflect is is about to run out, um, and obviously assault as well. You want to get your assault off. Now, obviously, my reflect has run out here, so I'm going to start to take a lot of, of damage, and I just decided to cade it um, because it's just safe. It's 20 kill, 20k left on the kill. Why not? Why not just do a cade and, and take it down nice and safely? So that's kind of it for this kill. Um, you see in this scenario here, very easy to get smited. Now I, I kind of was aware of that and I knew what my next ability was gonna be, was gonna be a res. Uh, but just be very careful if you're using a divine because if you get smited, you're basically screwed and you're gonna die because you can't eat and get your prayer back on fast enough before Karapax drained all your prayer again. Um, so yeah, I knew I was gonna res here, so. That was that was okay, but that's it for kind of this this overview. Um, yeah. All right, guys. So that is going to be it for this video. I hope that you found it useful. Uh, please do let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts, comments, feedback. Um, it'd be great to hear. The next one in this series uh, that I'm going to do is a slightly more advanced setup. Now I'm going to try and keep the gear relatively similar but we're gonna use some more of the unlocks. So for example, we're gonna be using like Limitless Sigil and Greater Barge and how to use that effectively um, with the time warp ability so that you get kind of maximum ability damage, um, how to five tick with the kind of Zara's God Swords at the right point and all that kind of stuff. So that's the uh, the plan for, for the next one. So not completely best in slot, um, but kind of slightly more advanced strategies for, for Karapak.